All right, so we're entering sectionals, Coach Craig Osika, and this is when things get, you know, a little bit intense, a little bit, you know, you're, you're focused a little bit more than usual because it's winner go home, but your team has been on one impressive run, especially the offense. This is an offense that has scored 48 points in five of your seven wins this year. Was this something that you thought would happen going into this year, or are you kind of taken by surprise of how well your offense has been playing so far? Well, I don't know. I don't know if you're ever ex- know what you're going to expect when you're dealing with kids. Um, I knew we had the potential to do this and we had some of the weapons, uh, but trying to get those weapons to gel uh, as quickly as they did with, you know, a new quarterback, getting TJ acclimated, getting uh, a new running back in the system with Will. You know, we're losing Trey and losing Noah last year and, and getting those new pieces in place. Um, you know, and getting them up and running uh, the way we wanted them to, you know, it took it took some time, but uh, we're, we're pleased with where we're at. Yeah, talk about a brand new offense for you guys. I mean, you got some guys from the transfer, obviously Johnny Sorensen from like Central, TJ Caldwell from Calumet. You talk about Willie Shear taking over that running back position. You know, how how as a coach are you trying to get the best out of them when these are three guys who really haven't played with one another, trying to learn each other's abilities, what they can and can't do. You know, as a head coach, talk about what that's been like over the year trying to build that relationship, what has really been like a three-headed monster for your offense so far. Yeah, I think that, you know, the nice thing about high school football is they allow you to have time in spring and getting that time in spring in the summer uh, to work with, you know, especially Johnny. Johnny came in uh, at the end of last year, so we had all spring with him um, and all summer. You know, Will was part of the system already, so that was, uh, you know, he knew the offense and he, he we knew he was going to be good. Obviously, you know, he didn't get to display a lot last year backing up Trey because Trey didn't miss a lot. But when Will did fill in the game against Lowell last year, you, you got a glimpse of what uh, he could be in, as only a sophomore. So um, getting them to gel in the spring and then TJ coming in in the summer, uh, trying to get him, um, you know, acclimated with the offense and understanding the offense and learning the offense. It's still a work in progress. Um, I think that we're playing – pretty close to, to our top potential on the offensive side of the ball. You know, you, you tell your kids, we have 10 weeks to be playing our best um, and getting those guys to gel. And, and you look at our, our receiver core. I mean, you got Aiden Leonard, you got Zach Bloom, you have Connor Stafford, you got uh, TJ. Uh, it, that's a pretty good group of guys um, that, that are solid receivers, that are good route runners, um, that have the potential to go deep. Um, but then you, you put Will in the backfield with Johnny being able to run too. Uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's, uh, you, you have multiple weapons. And then when Will needs a break, we have a sophomore Max Pickett that has really stepped up um, and done some really nice things too. So um, getting them to gel uh, with the offensive line, it takes time, but I, I think they've done a good job. And, and, you know, I think the nicest part about it is, is there's not, haven't seen a lot of the the ego where like, hey, I'm not getting the ball and there's pouting. You know, it's very easily when you're trying to distribute the ball against a, amongst a bunch of players that are talented, that have the ability to score and to gain a lot of yards. Them understanding, hey, the run game's working tonight. Pass game's probably not going to be there. Or, hey, you know, the pass game is there tonight. You know, the run game steps back a little bit. You know, our philosophy is to, to, to you know, take what the defense has given us. If they're packing a box, we got to throw the ball. If they're lighting a box, we'll run the ball. Um, and we try to explain to our players that, you know, our, our, our pass attack loosens the box for us to be able to run. And then when they got to pack the box because of the run, then we could we could take advantage of that with our receivers that we have and with, with Johnny. So, you know, there's still some things that we're improving on, um, but but I we're pretty pleased with where we're at uh, offensively. Now, going into postseason, obviously, you've been here a couple of times and you know how it works. When in your, when in you go home, you faced a new Prairie team that ultimately ended Hobart's season last year. What can you take from that loss last year that can help you, you know, possibly win this week? Yeah, I think you look at it. New Prairie, Casey's got his kids playing well, and he, he always does, and he's a good coach, and they're physical. And I think that you just look at – some of the mistakes we made last year, um, you know, we, we threw two interceptions. Uh, you know, that that hurt us right off the bat. It, defensively, it didn't seem like we could catch our breath at any point. Um, you know, we know that we're going to have to get to the ball, and we know we have to play gap sound football, and we're going to have to tackle. Um, you know, I challenged our kids last week to try to play a complete game uh, in all three phases, and I thought we were pretty close to doing that against Highland. Um so it, it, we just it, it, you just got to emphasize. We tell the kids that you know I tell the seniors this is your time. I tell our underclassmen you better play for your seniors. Our goal is to have 
you know, we left Monday. I said our goal is is to have another Monday. And, and moving forward every every day, we got to go out there and practice today to, to earn another Tuesday. Um, at this point, you're in practices, you're in games. So if you go out there and you, you don't have a good practice or you don't have a good session, have you have you earned it? Um, you know, and you hopefully every day from here on out that you, you're earning that next Tuesday, you're earning that next Wednesday. Um, we got to have our best practices on Tuesday, Wednesday. Those are real work days, clean things up on Thursday and be ready to go uh, Friday. Does anything change in a regular practice week in terms of playoffs? Like, you know, when you go to regular season, let's say last week against Highland, you're talking about, are you guys still practicing the way you would if it was this week against New Prairie? Or are you changing things just due to the fact that it is sectionals? Well, you don't really change anything. I think that as the year comes goes along, you know, you go from – you, you progressively kind of taper the practices. Okay, do you need a ton of individual at this point? No, probably not. Uh, you know, so you, you might have a, a quick individual session just to kind of get kids warmed up after the the, the dynamic warm up. Um, you know, you, you focus more on the team aspects of it. You focus on the special teams. We try to pare our practices down to right at two hours at this point, as opposed to two and a half, two forty five. So you know, we're trying to be in and out in in two hours. And and at this point. You've been practicing since since July, so if you're not giving your kids the adequate rest time that they need at this point, um, you, you know I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, so we, we try to pare practices down, be as efficient as possible, and that that takes a lot of a, a full scale effort with scout guys being where they need to be, being ready to go, um, you know, coaches being prepared. So I, I think the only difference is, is is the time that you're out there. You try to pare that down a little bit and try to be under two hours at this point. And then, and then as you advance in the, in the postseason with the weather getting bad and, and, and lights and whatnot, I mean, you may be out there for an hour and a half, hour 45. So you got to be really efficient with how you're practicing um, and really focus on the things that you need to get done in that, in that particular practice. Yeah. And we talked about a little bit playing, playing New Prairie this week at New Prairie. You know, what have you seen in the tape and, you know, probably just maybe from other conversations about this team? This is a team that's played a region team in Laporte. They lost to Laporte, actually, their first game of the year. You know, what have you seen on the tape so far? And, you know, what are you looking most forward to in this matchup? Well, I think that you look on the tape, they're physical. Um, they fly to the ball on the defensive side of the ball. They 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 protect the box and they they're going to stop the run. They're going to, I think, going to try to force you to win the game through the air, uh, which is difficult for teams to do uh, in at the high school level and also you know in a playoff environment, depending on the weather, depending on the field conditions. Um, so it, you know they're very sound defensively. They get to the ball. They're aggressive. They fly around. I think you look at them offensively. They're going to try to establish the run. Um, that's their identity. They want to do that. But on the other hand, they're they're a very efficient passing team. They've thrown for over a thousand yards. I don't believe they've thrown an interception this year. Um, so it, they put you in a position where you have to pack the box because of what they do offensively. Um, and, it, and it kind of puts you on an island in the defensive backfield with some of their, their receivers and some of the concepts they do. Um, but again, uh, you know, playing your best football, being assignment sound, doing what you're supposed to do, reading your keys, uh, you know, not 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 having our defensive back size in the backfield. OK, you're a man coverage or cover whatever coverage we're running at this point. You have to make sure that you're doing what you need to do. Um, and, and, and I think that, you know, Casey's probably telling his guys the same thing. You know, it, it, you look into the sectional draw, um, you know, it, it's it's. The, the you know arguably the two best teams in, in our sectional record wise um you know are playing round one it happens you look at throughout the state you know you look at bloomington south playing bloomington north you look at a lot of other teams that got that first round draw where you know record wise if they're on other sides of the brackets it, it might be the sectional championship game um but you know there it's it, every sectional is competitive and, and again crazy things happen in the offseason weather happens um you know so just having your guys prepared um, you know, it, it, we played New Prairie last year. They 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 came out and took it to us. Um, you know, they were a very good team last year. They're a very good team this year. Um, I, we expect them to kind of do the same things that they did last year, um, but they do have some different weapons than they did last year. And, um, you know, we're going to have to play. We're going to have to play.